Hello, hello. Let's go through the manufactured or mobile home purchase addendum. So there's been some recent changes to the RPA, as you are well aware. I want to show you what that looks like. So in the RPA, uh, what we used to do is there used to be an entire different form for mobile homes uh, as its own purchase addendum. It's now a part of the RPA. You scroll down on page four right here. Um, as you can see here, it's included here. So instead of filling out an entirely new RPA, you would just select that box stating that it is a manufactured home. And then everything else in that contract stays the same. So let's run through that form. All right, so the form we're going through again is the form titled MH-PA, for the purchase agreement. Make sure that you have all these parts filled out properly up here. And then here we go. There are two main choices here on paragraph one. Uh, either it's a manufactured home and it's personal property or it's been converted to real property. If it's the former, if it's been converted to real property, then the home can be located inside a mobile home park. And then that park may have rented land or it's sold at the, as the same time as the land it was purchased with and where it sits, where the mobile home sits. In which case, if it's sold with the land, then a vacant land purchase agreement would be necessary here as well. Make sure that you're filling out all necessary information here. Usually the seller will know which it is. If not, you can get this information from the park manager. If it sits completely on its own, then the land underneath it is considered vacant land. Because these homes are usually built off site, um, as you can see here, there are health and safety codes that they have to pertain to. All right, paragraph three, um, there aren't, not all lenders will be able to finance a mobile home. So make sure that you ask the park manager if they have um, strict stipulations. Usually they have lenders that they can refer you to for the parks. Uh, just make sure that you're using a lender who does mobile home purchases or manufactured home purposes. Um, because the seller may be financing it, um, there are parts here where like uh, parts here where the seller we'll have additional information. So as you can see here on item five, obligation secured, mixed collateral. This is for the buyer and seller's legal protection. So additional financing terms, that's what we just discussed. Alrighty. Um, so the, Manufactured homes do have specific disclosures, as you can see here on 7D. If it's as applicable, all references to the TDS in the agreement, which this addendum is attached, should be read as and shall mean that it is a manufactured home and home transfer disclosure statement. This is the name of the form here, MHTDS. 7 and 8. Uh, these homes are located in Mobile Home Park and many, many, many times the park has to have park approval um, of the buyers. So the park requires that the buyer understands if there's no leasing, what that looks like, if there's no assignment, uh, no rentals. The park wants to make sure that the consumer is well aware of that. And typically they have five days to do this. You can shorten and lengthen this as needed. And then the condition of the property, it's really important that your consumer understands that um, the property is sold as is. Now a mobile home, manufactured home, uh, there's not an APN number. 
they use these numbers here, a decal number, serial number, or an insignia. So make sure that when your consumer is purchasing a mobile home, that you have great communication either with the listing agent or the park manager to find out the exact information which you will need to get your clients through the finish line.